happy new year everybody happy 2023 so guys uh i hope you had a wonderful festive season and welcome back coding continues so today guys i'll be taking you through a simple calculator program in that and uh, having already gone through the basics you know how to write a function uh, you know how to declare variables uh, you know how to use if else statement so today we want to combine all those to make a simple calculator and by the way you can also use switch case statement to build this same calculator program so i'll show you through if else statement then you can try out through a uh, switch case statement so what do we need to write this program first and foremost we need the two header files the dot.io maths and that that dot.io and that math so uh, we will be writing two functions one for it taking the number and second one for it taking the operand that the user wants to uh, operate with so first and foremost let's start by writing the function for taking a number and we will first define the return type here we will use a double so we'll say double then we say num input that will be void we will be taking anything so first and foremost we have to print out something on the screen to guide the user so we'll say print then we'll say enter the number operation right that is the first thing we will do enter the number of operation then how does the user enter the number we have to use the io we'll use now the imported io through the standard in the read line sync so we'll say double my number right equals to then we have to convert the input so to convert the input to double we'll say double dot pass so that what the user will input will be converted it will be converted into a double and if you remember your data types double what is a double double it has decimal places integer doesn't have any decimal places So we'll say double, then we say standard input dot read line sync. Then we have to introduce this null safety, the exclamation mark, the semicolon. So that will really allow the user to input the number. So once the user input the number, then we return that input. So we return my number. That will be our return. So up to this point, open clear. Yeah? so the first function is done so we we'll write our second function which will allow the input of an operand either a plus a minus a subtraction a division yeah okay so let's write the second function so it will be a return type of string then we'll call it a uh, operand operand choice operand choice it won't take anything but we also have an alternative of taking something there are different ways you can configure this program to run in different ways so programming is always trying different mechanism every day you try you fail that's when you learn you do more research so what we'll say we will print something once again this time we'll print enter an operand enter the operation i'll try the operand eg we'll give example so that the user the program clearly guides the user so that he's able to understand what the program wants him to do so is a you either enter plus or a minus 
uh, or a division. And guys, you can uh, look at the different types of division. You can operate on a number. Uh, then uh, we can take uh, multiplication. Yes. So for now, we'll use uh, these four main ones. So you can uh, try and introduce more on your own as you work on the program, just to see what you can, if you can also build it. So once the user reads that, enter the operand, then you will see a plus, a minus, a division, or uh, a multiplication. So what do we do? We allow the user to input the number. It will print, print will just print out that the instruction, but it will not allow the user to do anything. Uh, after that, it will just print and stop at that point. So you have again to reduce the standard uh, in read line sync. So we will say, uh, uh, let's call it what? Mm, let's call it a user. Let's call it a user input uh, or operand input operand uh, input. So sorry we have to define the data type guys always remember to define the data type don't be like me <laughs> who keeps on forgetting so uh, you always have to define it you have to tell the program the data type you're working with just like c we do it in c uh we do it in c plus plus in that we also in java in that we also have to do the same thing so we'll say opera input then uh, it will be standard input dot read line sync. Once again, introduce the exclamation. Then you return what? The operand input. We return the operand input. So with that, we come to the end of our second function. So as you can clearly see and read the lines, you'll be able to interpret what the functions does. So our main point of interaction in that program is the void main. That is where, that is the that, that will read that particular function and follow up based on what is installed in that function. So we will write the void main, just like a, if you if you see we have the int main which is the first point of interaction in c programming so void main also in that is the point of interaction uh, in that so what we will do we'll input the first number num1 and let it be a double guys always remember write the data type you're working with in that it is not like python so we'll say num1 is equal to what it will call the function number num input so once it calls the function the program will read the function what the function says and execute the based on the direction of the function so for example this one if it reads dab num num1 then it will print enter the number for operation that is what it will print if you are to put your operand choice then the output will be enter the operand it will print that line and give you the opportunity to enter the operand. So, uh, once you do that, what do you do? We again have to call the second number because you cannot add a single number. You have to add it with something. If you add a single number, you get that number because it will be one plus zero, it will be one so we again call num input so we already oh sorry num2 it should be num2 it should be num2 so now we've called the two numbers so if you run the function it will say enter the number of operation and again it will call the function enter the number of operation again you will enter so once you do that, then we'll call the operand. So we'll say choice. 
let it be a string and choice it will equal to the operand operand choice that is what it will call so well it will call the first num1 num2 then call the the choice then once we get these three inputs then what we want to do we want to output them through a variable called answer so answer will be a double uh, answer we will initialize it to 0, 0.0 let it be by default let it be 0, 0.0 answer let it be 0, 0.0 so that if it doesn't get any value the output will be zero just like the calculate when you open it there on the screen it always displays zero by default the answer is always zero so once you give the input then it will uh, do the necessary operation then it will change the value of answer based on the operation done so how do we get the answer how do we print out the answer that's the next question that is where now we introduce the if else statement so we'll say if opera if choice sorry choice is equal to what a plus if the user gives a plus uh, if the user gives a plus then we do what we return what we say answer answer will be equal to what num1 num1 plus num2 right what if the answer the choice is not plus we say else if choice equals to subtraction then what do we do we subtract num1 from num2 right then we'll say answer will be equal to answer will be equal to num1 minus num2 right so this is for the multiplication the addition and subtraction so guys always take care of your codes what if the user doesn't input any of the following or any of the input how do you handle that so let's put an else else what print you print invalid function valid invalid input please review please review so we now want to output the answer we want it to read by for now you will see the you will put the number one number two and the operand but it will not give you the answer it will not print out because you have not executed the print part so uh, you have to do the print part so we'll say after all this then you print what then we'll say num one num1 then we will call the choice so each plus you say one plus or minus num1 choice then you say equal to answer num1 choice sorry 
then we say num2 num2 will be equal to answer right yes sorry you have to put the opening and closing because we are printing so once we do this it will be able to print out so let's print it out so it will tell us tell us enter the number of operation i will enter 23 enter again the number another number 13 so I want to deliberately choose a wrong input. Let's see what it gives us. Valid input, please review. So you will uh, add the print once you get the num1, num2. So you write answer one, answer one, answer two, then to tell you to print out based on the input. If the input is wrong, then it will print invalid input. Please review. So let's just try it again. Let's just try it again. So we'll call it, uh, let's say 23. Uh, 23 then we enter 10 then let's input a wrong input then it will tell us valid input please review so to review you go back and review review the operand that you entered so let's enter the right number so enter the first operation we will enter 12 then we will enter 10 then we will add them let's add then it will tell us 12 plus 10 is equal to 22, which is correct. So guys, that's how you can make a simple calculator with those few steps. You can try it further and see for addition, for division, for modulus. And you can also try and work it out based on a sweet case statement. So without further ado, I'll leave it at that point. And uh, guys, I'm wishing you all the best this 2023. This is your year. You need to keep on pushing. Anything is possible. Everything is all about research and learning more. You'll never learn by the basics. You always have to go further. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.